Madison Square Garden is the host of the East Regional Semifinal, and I am here with Anthony DeBundo of Action Network. Anthony, how you doing, man? Doing well. I mean, it's the longest three days of the year, waiting in between the end of the second round and the start of the Sweet 16. Uh, but, you know, we're getting ready to go here, and it's going to be a great weekend of hoops. Couldn't agree with you more. So we got a good one on tap at the world's most famous arena down the road here. If you are going to the game, want a little action, Anthony's got some picks for you. Uh, first one, Michigan State, Kansas State. We've got Mr. March, Tom Izzo against the little guy, Marquise Noel. Maybe the most fun player in the tournament so far. That guy's electric. Anthony, how are you feeling about this game? Kansas State, the, the better seed, the higher seed, but plus two. Yeah, I mean, there hasn't been a ton of market respect for Kansas State. I mean, they opened minus nine in the round one against Montana State, closed as low as minus seven. Uh, in round two, they opened a pick em against Kentucky, closed plus three and a half. And in this game, they opened as a one-point favorite and are now a two-point underdog. So there's clearly a lot of money that's come in against this Wildcats team, each of their three tournament games. And that has continued here. Uh, Michigan State, I think, you know, we have to be careful not falling for narratives. And I know that Tom Izzo has been great in March. He has been better on the second day than the first, if you look at some of the trends. So like the second game, the second round, the Elite Eight uh, has been better for him than the first round when he's you know on that shorter turnaround. From a matchup perspective, I mean, this is also very exciting because you have the two New York City point guards between Tyson Walker and Marquise Noel. I think this game ultimately comes down to Michigan State and their pick and roll offense and how much they're able to take advantage of Kansas state and their lack of real size on the interior, because Kansas state doesn't have a ton of rim protection. They are pretty weak on the glass. That's their huge weakness here. That will be tough. I think against the Michigan state, uh, you know, ball screen actions, which really tore up Marquette in the last round and was the rain difference. And at the other end of the floor, you know, Michigan State has much better ball screen defense than, say, Kentucky did. And and Kentucky made a or Kansas State made a pretty significant adjustment in the second half, switching uh, and getting Sheepway in more ball screens. And then, you know, Noel just being way too fast. So I think Michigan State is rightly favored. I think this line's about right. If I had to bet it, I would bet Michigan State. As far as an interesting trend, uh, games in Madison Square Garden, college basketball games in the last 17 years, the data goes back, first half unders hit at about 62%. So that is notable, uh, whether it's the jitters of playing in the world's most famous arena. Uh, we do have new balls this tournament, which has seemed to throw off the shooting. Uh, that has been a notable trend and one that I will uh, be sprinkling a little bit of money on myself. First half unders were a great trend in the first weekend. So now that you got it with Madison Square Garden as well, sounds like a good play. In the second game, Tennessee FAU. Personally, Tennessee is my favorite pick of the tournament so far. Love them at minus five. One of the oldest teams in the country. They just beat one of the, the teams. Or they just beat Duke, who was one of the best teams going into the tournament. Red Hot, a favorite for the Final Four. Anthony, what? tell me why I'm wrong. Why is Tennessee not the play? Well, here, it, I think it's interesting because coming into this tournament, I think a lot of people would have told you Tennessee lost to Kai Ziegler, their starting point guard, to the ACL. Uh, they're a fade team. They're a team you don't want to pick to make the second weekend. They're a team that surely won't get by Duke, might even lose to Louisiana. And look, the market kind of felt that way. I mean, they again, they opened minus 14 against Louisiana, closed minus 11. Market moves strongly against them. In the Duke game, I mean, Tennessee has been better than Duke for 95% of the season, but Duke was on the hot run. They just won the ACC. The market was drunk on Duke. The Blue Devils were three and a half point favorites. Look, I bet Tennessee in round two myself. And I thought that line was absurd. Tennessee was the better team all year. Ken Palm made them a favorite. Now I think the pendulum has almost swung too far the other way. And that's where I think this line has value in FAU. Tennessee, now everybody's saying, wow, look how they bullied Duke. Uh, they, they, you know, they beat the hell out of Duke. They were too physical for them. Now they're the clear favorite to make the Final Four. I mean, I think they're better than FAU, but I don't think they're multiple possessions better. And I think it comes down to this. Duke had major turnover problems in that game on sun, on Saturday. They kept turning the ball over. I think they ended up with 15 in the game. FAU is very good at moving the ball around the perimeter without turning it over. They take a ton of threes. Tennessee's defense is number one in the country against threes. But remember, they haven't played in a tough conference of opposing shooters. The SEC was the worst shooting conference all season long. Then they played Duke, who was not a very good shooting team this year. Louisiana didn't take a lot of threes. So I think FAU stays in this game from the perimeter. They are not nearly as big as Tennessee. That is true. But they are physical. They compete on the glass. 
Uh, and, and I think Tennessee will benefit or, or will, will struggle from playing uh, as, as the favorite role here. They have not been good uh, in these kind of roles in the last month because their offense is so inconsistent. And so I think FAU is undervalued. I think the biggest thing here, you know, Ken Palm, you know, comparing Ken Palm to the betting market is a, is a okay start on, on trying to gauge a team. Ken Palm made Tennessee a significant favorite over Duke. The market disagreed. Now the market thinks Tennessee's better than Ken Palm does. They have Ken Palm has this round three to four, which is about where I think it should be. Now they're laying five and a half. I just think it's too many. Uh, and so I'm going to take the Owls. I think they've been flying under the radar. And if you look at it, Conference USA, UAB, and North Texas are both in the NIT semifinals. Charlotte is in the CBI final. FAU was the only bid in this league, but this was a damn good league. And I think FAU is the real deal. So I'm going to take the Owls. I don't know that they'll win, but I think it's a very close game. All right. We will see. Uh, there is two more games tomorrow night away from Madison Square Garden. We've got UConn and Arkansas. And we've got UCLA, Gonzaga. Two great games. What is your favorite pick of those two games, Anthony? I'm going to go with UConn. I really have no idea what to expect in Gonzaga, UCLA. I think that's truly a coin flip game. Probably won't be betting it. We'll just enjoy it as a fan. But I'll go with UConn here. I think Arkansas had a pretty favorable matchup with Kansas. Kansas' biggest weakness was rim defense. They didn't really have the rim protection like last year, and that was ultimately what proved the difference. I mean, Arkansas got to the rim. They got to the line. They won the game, came back. UConn is with Sonogo and Klingon. Just you don't score at the rim against UConn. It just doesn't happen. And UConn is so big and so long that they're just going to pack it in and they're going to make Arkansas shoot to beat them. And I don't think Arkansas can do it. I think UConn's the better team at both ends of the floor. Uh, and so I'm laying three and a half on UConn in the, uh, in Vegas. It should be a fun one. Hurley and Musselman uh, out there. But uh, I think this is a much better matchup for UConn given how hard it is to score on them inside, which is where Arkansas gets all of its points. They're one of the worst shooting teams in the country. That coaching matchup was what I was going to bring up to Anthony Musselman versus Danny Hurley going up and down the sideline. That should be a, a fun one. Thanks again, man. Thank you.